Hello, 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 and welcome to It's All Good. I am your host, Latavia, and back for another episode. If this is your first time listening, welcome. I'm so glad that you're here. It's All Good is a weekly podcast where I share my experiences uh, and acceptance of just this, um, this thing called life and just the fact that it is a journey, not a destination. Um, this week's episode is a continuation of the previous episode in terms of our my friends Africa and Elizabeth joining me to discuss the Brian Flores case. If you're not familiar, Brian Flores is a coach with the NFL who is currently suing them for discrimination. Um, so if you did not listen to the first part, I would encourage you to listen just so you have full context. But um, before I get into that, just want to do the gratitude moment. That is one of the things that I do to start every episode. And this week, I am grateful for family. I'll say I'm grateful for my parents. This past weekend, they came up and I was able to celebrate with them my birthday, my dad's birthday, and the fact that my dad will be graduating on May 5th with his doctoral degree. I'm so very proud of him and just the fact that I'm able to see that and see him accomplish one of his goals that he's had for several years, just to see the smile on his face um, and knowing that he is close to the finish line. So um, without further ado, I'm going to just let you all get back, get into the uh, episode. So enjoy. And I guess bringing it back to Brian Flores and the NFL, the way that things are being handled, are they responding to Brian Flores? Granted, it's a little, it's different in terms of how it's the response to his suit, his lawsuit is very different from the response to Colin Kaepernick. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's like, if we're looking big picture, we are making tortoise progress. Yeah. But I also think the approach begets a different outcome from the, from Cap's situation. True. Um, Yeah. He didn't sue until after. He tried. Like he he made a. I think he made a good faith effort to avoid. Absolutely. Right. And I Definitely. think and I, I think, think that there was a tangible thing that you I mean with Brian Flores. Like they like you have his record, so there so there is a tangible thing. But then you could also like really look at the years in which Cap was not in the league, and you could also look at the talent that was or was not there, and sit there and say. Really about this like, game clean. Mm-hmm. like he's been to a Super Bowl. Like this is a player who's been to a Super Bowl mm-hmm. who can't mm-hmm. even get a backup spot. Like they would bring back Tim Tebow, who in no, all put fairness, us in. Like, <laughs> like what? Any we like, we'll get to throw before him. Like Mark Sanchez from like the Jets going everywhere under the sun. Like do I don't know what you say about that right so then I mean it was it was beyond just like okay you have these numbers here and you see coaches like standing whatever okay and the COVID years even looking at coaching I think might be a, a little bit tricky just because you were losing players and bringing them back and losing players so that could be a whole nother thing to discuss separately and apart to actually break down those numbers but you could actually look and see the talent level wasn't there and Cap was a fully functional quarterback who, again, had been to a Super Bowl and still got a chance to play. Like, and even if you look at, like, say, a Cam Newton, he got chances to play again. And he's having issues right now, too. Girl, but, but yeah, yeah it's the, clearly <laughs> Cam got to play again. Mm. <laughs> like, come on now. It, yeah. When you can so many levels. So many levels. Right. But I guess, like I said, if we are looking at it big picture, there has been progress. And so I'm gonna do my best to focus on <laughs> the progress. Yeah. And I think that's like I said, I do think that's part of what this lawsuit is, whether that's intended that's the intention or not I think that's what it'll be like I said I think it is um they're looking to stop this arbitration because for all we know people have made these complaints in the past um Mm -hmm. 
but you know it was concealed because it was all the NDAs and everything that comes from the confidentiality of arbitration so I think is and, and to me like if that's I, I count that victory I count just some of the stuff that was like I said I my eyes were opened from reading the complaint like I said things that I've wondered about but obviously I didn't care enough to go research it um mm -hmm. and honestly some of that stuff I didn't know like I was <laughs> Like, I, I didn't even know I would not have even known how to go research it, you know um so to me right there that's just a good example of a way to make progress and I it is it's not ideal that we kind of have to piecemeal our progress like this but that's been the name of the game in this country and that's that's really that's part of the that's part of why part of the fight you know this the why do we have we have to keep settling we don't have to but somehow the, it has played out exactly. that we keep getting tossed crumbs or as i like to say keep pissing on us and telling us it's raining um you know what i'm saying but do you disregard those crumbs when you keep gathering those crumbs you get you a full piece of cake It's the, you know what I'm saying? You, so he's just trying to crack at it. So he basically has, since you mentioned him earlier, like the Tupac approach. Like Tupac, no, like I'm not going to reach this milestone, but I'm going to, you know, make a big enough dent so that the next person behind me can right. break through and just do that. Yeah, I, that's one of the things I look at, or that's one of the things I consider when I'm looking at it. Like I said, because I don't really know what. You know what I'm saying? Even though I was, I'm on here like, yeah, Brian this, B Flores, that ain't my homie. Like, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know where, you know, where he is, you know, in his approach with all of this. So I'm just trying to look at the different angles. Yeah. I mean, if that's, if that's the goal, then. <laughs> She's like, no, it I, can't mean, I guess for me, I just can't, I guess for me, I just can't <laughs> get over the sloppiness of it. Like that to me is always something that's going, because if I'm thinking, if you're trying to lay a foundational piece, mm -hmm. you're going about it a way to actually lay a, something in which the people who are coming behind you actually know what the piece was. And between the three of us on this call, at this point, again, more information may come out. And we may know more later on. But between the three of us, so three lawyers just sitting here on a call, we can't figure out what the heck. <laughs> and we sat here and we read, how, wait, let me pull up this complaint. It's what, it's 58? We read 58 pages of a complaint. We watched some interviews. We read some social media posts. We've done a whole bunch of stuff. And between the three of us, we can't figure out what that piece is exactly. Mm -hmm. But you know what? Maybe it's not for us to understand. It's for the person that would be coming up next for them to understand it better. Because at this point, maybe. But the other thing too, I guess with that is there are a lot of discrimination complaints, not, you know, like generally complaints, not legally submitted complaint that that are kind of, I'll say, airish or holy or, you know, flimsy-ish or something like that. But that doesn't mean it's not there. It's yeah. just, and, and like, let's keep it a book. We are Black women. We know that people discriminate against us all the time. We just can't prove it. This is facts. And we also, but I think that we also come correct, though, because we know that because we can't prove it and we can't do anything else, that if we're actually going to step out and actually go that route we're gonna have our facts together like boom 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 and it's gonna make sense and again he got his facts together the ones he, that he, he had that. but the thing too like you said we're black women so we know this but i feel like from what i've you know like i said in reading and looking at things i think it appears Brian Flores had a little bit of that I'm not black, I'm OJ sim syndrome going for him. 
for a little while. Oh, yeah. I was hoping we weren't going to go down that road. I was trying like, not to, but I think, because, but I, think, I avoided but, it. I'm, I, but, but I feel like with what y'all are saying that we can't not address together, that. together, Elizabeth. It's me and you against the world. She the world. Oh, now <laughs> I'm not. Now I'm out. I now I'm out. Okay, but, okay. and I don't, and that was another I don't want reference for you. <laughs> I know. I got it. I caught it. <laughs> but, because it's not even on because I feel like this is something else that will be can be used you know to try to use against him to you know weaken his argument but I think to the point of what you just said the fact that we because we know that there are 50 cards stacked against us so to speak before we make a move we are we are thinking 10-15 steps ahead and that may be a a luxury like he might have the luxury or had thought he had the luxury of not doing that or he may have been able to operate that way without having to because he has been allowed to make mistakes or to do something and then come back and correct it and so and I'm not saying that he did I don't know the man I don't know his intent but I think the fact that even in all of this coming out because if it's on the you know history is coming out and so I think to that point, there was some level of, well, I'm just, I'm gonna throw it, I'm, let me throw it at the wall, see what sticks. See what and it could be, because remember, there, there are now two other named plaintiffs, not just members of the class, two other named plaintiffs that have been added. So, and it could be that he already knew what the landscape was. But he was like, well, I'll be the one to take the L. I'll take the first step. Yeah. And the first one over the hill always catches it. Like that's exactly. And that, trust me, I understand that pain. And like mm-hmm. literally you just I lived it. You were like, I'm just gonna go. I understand that. Yeah. And again, I don't okay, I don't think that this overall is just an undesirable case. I think it's a really sure. good case to have. You are very displeased. <laughs> I just don't. <laughs> I just it's, don't I understand. Like, I just can't get my head around some of these things that I'm seeing because I just and plus and and you know what honestly it may be a result of where we went to school and how we encounter the world every day that now when I look at it I'm just confused because I can envision at least two professors right now in my head who would have said seen that and said so you don't plan on graduating but you just don't want to win huh <laughs> you don't, don't want to make a you don't want to make a living doing this huh you just you just here wasting yours and my all, all of our time yeah and I feel like I know one of the ones that you're in oh yes yeah, you do you do <laughs> but, and, um, and, he would, and he would have literally said it would have been very clear Miss Thompson so you just don't plan on graduating is, <laughs> is this is this what you're telling me right now Mm-hmm. And, and then that, let you guess at all the reasons as to why, but not ever tell you right. 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 You know, that's like putting the two arrows up on the on on the screen. You know, mm-hmm. you go right, you can go left. <laughs> Man, we're not, we're not okay. That's what we're not going to do. Hey. We're not going back to two thousand nine. That's what we will not. <laughs> oh go Lord, that was so long ago. Oh my goodness. Yeah. yeah. Another thing too is it could be a matter, I'll say, of volume, for lack of better words, because I'm, you know, coming off the dome here, bars. <laughs> um, so <laughs> it could be a matter too of if you get enough, even if you just think about the, the information that's presented, the historical information that's presented in the complaint, it could be a matter of, so how many times do you hear the same story? Even if it's not a full story, even if it's not full fledged, but how many times you hear the same story before you like, okay, it's gotta be something to this. Cause there's too many people that's the came with a story that's too similar. And if I put this person's story with this person's story, I got a whole story you know stuff like that so it it could be that too like okay well we we gonna and that's even like well that's even how you attack the whole uh pattern and practice so you know I think I I don't think it is as it's not ironclad right but most cases won't won't be a slam dunk true and so that's when you one less what'd you say I said cases have been won with less. Exactly. 
and they're gonna and they're going to be fine like oh, this is also just like a personal preference for how a thing should be organized in my brain right. and anything else. like they're going to be fine right. I have no doubt that they will figure this out and I have and I also think that they will probably have more name plaintiffs like I don't think that this will just stop here I think that there will be more people that will join as this grows I think a lot of people are going to sit out and wait just to see you know if it actually has legs and it will go somewhere because they don't I mean why attach yourself to something that that's going to fail if you still want to get a job someday if you still want to be out there so it's not worth it for them yet to jump on board but once time, you know, once this gets a little bit more time and we get to see the reception of it by the court, by the public, just in general, I think that there will be more people who are willing to jump on board. Mm -hmm. I agree. Definitely. It's even, like I said, just this one has, it's about systemic racism, but it's also about, like I said, there's also, there's nepotism involved as well and I think that is part of why I think it'll be a little easier for people to get on board with this than with some of the other situations um because oh I lost my train of thought but essentially before I forget you were saying something about with like a lot of times with discrimination cases there's you know something's happening but you can't prove it or you can't quite put your finger on it and I think with this, because, and this made me think of also that uh, the thread you sent me, Elizabeth, um, from Michael Harry about just mm-hmm. the, the layers in the history in terms of just how there's outside of the owners of things that goes into um, how people become coaches in the NFL, uh, it could be, there could be some who it's not intentional that they're not trying to hire Black coaches. It's, I don't know any. I bring on people that I know. Um, I've heard, um, I think they kept on stage and in, 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 uh, that chick Angel on their podcast, they talk about like in Hollywood, when you have a production, the, the director brings on the people that they know. So if I don't know anyone that's black or I don't know any women, then I can't bring them on. I'm gonna hire the people that I know. So I think because it's, it's a two-edged thing of yes, yeah. there is still this perception that Black people are not as smart or can't handle as much. Um, And so you might not be, clearly you're not able to manage and coach a team or the fact that Black coaches are not given as much rope to, or given as much time to develop a team to get to a winning season. Whereas you have other coaches that are given, other coaches and players that are given years and years and chances. Sorry, the name came to mind that I'm just like, why and how? But um. It's, so I think because of all those different layers, and like you said, as people continue to watch and see, I think that that gives a little more strength and comfort in saying, okay, I want to be involved in this, whether it's as a named plaintiff or just, a, I'm going to put my number in because this has the potential of getting so big that they can't try to penalize me for being a part of it. Right. And that might be more of me and my hope and we need to cue in the Ari again. Um, okay, I have a question with that. <laughs> So just like wondering, like playing this out, right? So, and we've been talking about Kat, like in looking at what he did and then, you know, the there was support from players, but not necessarily like broad support all the way across the board. Do you think that even if there are like other coaches of color, like black coaches that would be coming up now that they would say, you know what? I want to join this too. I really like not, not coaches who have had like their run and maybe won't get hired again, regardless of what they do, but just younger coaches who are coming into the league now who are maybe coordinators and working their way up. Like would they even touch this? Because I think that for the numbers that are had in the NFL, and this is, also what happens outside of as is not necessarily utilized well to advocate for certain positions because if they decided one day listen we're not going to play anymore who's I mean at least for a couple of weeks you might not have any teams to field because you wouldn't have any players to play and that could move 
a lot because again, if you are basically the product and you control and you're what people want to come and see, and then you use your power to say, you know what, we're good this week. And then we're, and you know what, we're going to be good until we get what we're asking for. Like, do you think the players or the coaches would collectively come together and say, hey, this is the problem here. We see it's a problem here and we want to address it. We're just going to get the people who are at the end of their career tailing off saying, I know I'm done. I'm just going to jump on because I lived through this for the past 30 years. And I think it's a problem. So it's 2022. So I want to say, yes, I think you would get more than if it were, say, 2002, more of the newbies, the rising people. But the reality, I think, is you won't get as many as we would like because it's the dilemma of, I don't, the word that's coming to my mind is selfishness, but I don't know that that's the accurate word. So y'all help me out. Self-preservation. Um, yeah. And especially because you still need to reach the tipping point of people to jump on the bandwagon, so to speak. Because until that, and, and do we really, is, is there a, a set number for that? Like, how do we know when you get there? But before that, you just have outliers, outcasts, people that, that can, it's easier to dismiss you. It's easier to label you as a renegade or something disgruntled, you know, that's where they definitely don't want to go. Stuff like that. Um, but I think if you could get the snowball, if you can get it to where it's already a snowball, yeah, I think you would. Um, but people are not interested in sacrificing their livelihoods, especially when they're like, we have examples of people who have lost everything. Exactly. Yeah. And that's where I think the dilemma rises, especially when you, like I said, all of this stuff is loaded, especially when you get to the number of players that, that you know, came from nothing. And their whole, yeah, they, they might love the game but they wanted to go to the league. They didn't, it's not for the fame. It's not to have a name on the back of a jersey. It's to get that check so that they can, you know, change the trajectory of their lives and those that they love. That's, that is such a compelling desire, aspiration, especially to get that close to it. Like it, you right. hard pressed to get somebody to, to risk it, you know? Yeah. So do like, you think that with that, do you think that, and I wouldn't know this, that players separate themselves from the outside issues while they're players and I then, or just like, or even like coaches are just like, these are not my issues at this time. And then they I, go on, but even though like all of their physical attributes would make them <laughs> a problem in, in like in any other setting, that's I like- think- 11 o'clock news. I think, obviously, I don't know them, but I would be surprised to say that none of them do because to an extent, we've all had to do that in some way, shape, or form in our professional, in our educational or professional careers um, in the sense of, like you said, Africa was saying, like, I care, but do I care enough to be sitting on the side of the street, not being able to eat or pay my bills? Or if I have a family and like she was saying, a lot of them, it's not just, I made it, I made it. And now my whole family or my whole community made it. And there's a lot riding on me keeping this job, especially when you think about the players who we don't know their names and they're, cause it, I think they're still sort of, you know, like they're not, it's not like they have guaranteed money. And so I think it's harder for them to make that decision or make that sacrifice. And to your question earlier, Elizabeth, I think, yes, there's a part of me that hopes they will. But the reality is, I don't think, I think it will be more of your retired coaches um, or retired players who have tried. I'm hoping that we can get some some of the bigger names. Um, And Deion Sanders came to mind. I don't know that he ever tried to coach in the NFL but I feel like if someone like him got put his name with it 
And obviously he hasn't coached at the NFL, but he has now has demonstrated success as a head coach. So I feel like if someone like him were to add his name to this, it would give it a little more power to create that snowball. But I still think the newer coaches, they'll be the ones coming closer to the tail end when it's more clear that, yes, this is going somewhere and it's not going the the risk has been reduced because I forget which one of you said it like to the point of with Kaepernick it's I feel you I I see you I support you however I don't have your record Nike might Nike's probably not gonna come calling me for an endorsement and so and I probably didn't didn't finish Nike was gonna call him from like we we were shocked with Nike you know so nobody thought that was coming either right and so but not everyone may not be able to pivot or turn it you know to be able he's now able to still make a living you know probably comparable if not better than when he was in the NFL and I think even as a whole I don't know that we've ever come together like that that was gonna be be my thing like I guess that would be the question though was like at that point when your numbers are so great and you make up more than 50 percent of a thing right like you make up more than 50 percent of it and this is now on the player side not on the coaching side using your collective power if you so chose what would that get you I mean I don't know I don't know if they would say you know what that's great we'll find replacements and we're going about our day we don't really care or if it would be something that could actually be used to push something forward true and then it's also if whatever that is is it worth it um because the only time that I know of in in history is or that I can think of is Montgomery bus boycott and that took a year and some change but that's the only time that I know of in recent history where we have collectively come together to support everyone or not yeah essentially to where there was that support system of like even if you lose your job there's something in place to protect you or to take care of you and your family so I don't know yeah. what it would take or what that thing would be um but we're gonna just I guess we're gonna keep watching <laughs> and seeing what happens um and like it's in I think one thing that kind of keeps coming up is just there ha- progress has been made and although it doesn't always look the way we want it to, or it takes a lot longer <laughs> to get there, but even, you know, one of the other things that I said in terms of about uh, just future justice, uh, Katanji Brown Jackson, the fact that she's not only natural, but has sister locks and that she's now going to be on the Supreme Court is just like, yeah. for me, that that just that's that's big for me because I even think about the times when prepping for an interview you know you need to straighten your hair or you know you have to we got to go to court dressed a certain way we have to adjust how we say things the tone representation matters yes and so it's like we don't know how things are going to play out with with this case with Brian Flores but I do think some good has already come out of it and I hope that more will continue. Um, it's, but there's that's, a lot with this. There's a lot to unpack because there's so many, because it's not, although it's sports related, this literally is analogous to life, real life, everything that we yeah. encounter like every single day. And the things that he's, one thing too, and I don't know if we touched on this earlier because you guys were talking about just other discrimination complaints or cases, what he's saying or what they're saying happened to him I've seen happen multiple times in employment situations because I've I've been in a position where I was on a, a a hiring committee or the hiring person or just hearing about it, knowing that oh well we have to post this job legally we have to post this job, but I already know we already know who we want to hire, or we knew after the first two that we wanted to hire this person but we've already invited these other people to interview. So we still have to go through with these interviews and we need to make sure we're asking the same questions. 
of every person. So if you if something comes up that was not on the list and you ask this candidate, oh maybe somebody write that down because we got to make sure we ask the other one to make sure that when we don't hire them, right. if they come back and file a claim, we can say no, we this was the process we said that we had. We followed it. Everyone was asked the same questions. This is the format that we use for everyone. So they weren't hired because of X, Y, Z. It was just the best business decision. We chose to hire this person. And so that to me is, like I said, the other parallel, like this is happening across the board in other Every day, B. Yeah. (laughs) So like, it's just those industries are not, they don't have the publicity and the notoriety mm-hmm. that the NFL does. And so you said there are <laughs> so many levels because I've, I've been in some rooms where I just look at people like, really? Right. This but at the same time, I've been on both sides of that very thing. I've been in situations where I knew a job was mine and that the interview was a formality. Um, and I've been in situations where I didn't know the job was somebody else's, but you know, it later came back to me that it was somebody else's, but like, that's, I even came in, interviewed and gave that person whose job it was to lose a run for their money. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it's definitely, like I said, that's why I say, I know this happens every day Mm -hmm. and it's not always. So, and that's the thing. So that's the whole, uh, that's one of the holes in it. Like is even though that is not the way it's supposed to go, that is a hole in the whole discrimination thing. Like it could be that we knew we didn't want you from jump or we knew we didn't want you early on or at whatever point, uh, but it didn't have anything to do with whatever it is that makes you different. Yeah, and, and that is for better or worse, that is what makes these cases even more difficult. Um, and it may not have always been, been a race thing. Like it could have been like a personality thing. It could have been a production thing. It could have been, I mean, it could have been. And I just don't like you. Right. And that's the thing. That's the personality part of it all. And I understand that very well. So I mean. The owner has said that, you know, he had started to be more vocal about them not being such a good fit. Now, of course, like I said, not my homie, but B. Flores, um, was saying like that was because he wouldn't tank the games and so you know at, at the owner's request what was his name Ross um and, and his- they hired and who they hired as his replacement I mean we have to factor that in too because that does go to something I'm not right. sure what something is at the moment given with his introduction <laughs> I feel was. you but <laughs> it goes but it well, adds to something that's where, listen, that's where you want to go listen. That's the that's where you want to go with this. Listen, mm-hmm. the man said what he said, and it is what it is. But I'm just saying they they can say I said on paper. Much? On, listen on paper, and we know what is what, and we know when we go to court, the thing that's on that piece of paper really really matters. Mm-hmm. So on paper, they can present a case of was it really discrimination? Because if it was discrimination, and then. You know, because he's complaining about not getting the job and that being discriminatory. But even where he left and the reason why he left there and him having issues with them, like, but then who they hired to replace them, they can say, well, what's your problem? Because on paper, they essentially Mm -hmm. brought it right back. Right. You did that hard, you know, rewind. True. And there are many holes. Um, That's where lawyering comes into play. Next. And there, that's, I guess, there. that's when we're going to find out if they really know what they're doing or, and it could even be why the NFL has made the choices they've made in terms of who they hired. Mm-hmm. You need somebody you know, who knows, who you knows know the that, that's major. It, that, who wasn't know. Right, like, who better to, add, to defend us against such thing? better than the person who represented the entire institution like can we just talk about how crazy that is though like for one second that is really that's wild now that I is mean, a room i would love to have been in to hear that I mean, decision i would have loved to have seen it because like, it's, 
What I mean, was I'm, just, I'm fascinated to I'm fascinated like to read the arguments, to hear the argument. I I can't wait because for a person who literally dedicated their whole career to fighting all types of things that this would imply to have been, it <laughs> makes me wonder. Like, is the case really real? Because I I mean, I just wonder, because why would she come there to defend a thing that, you know, throughout history has been discrimination for something she's obviously never been a fan of, always wanted to fight against it, was, was a crusader against it. So I'm just interested, <laughs> like, what are the arguments? Like, is this, right. is this really what we're thinking it is based upon how it was packaged and presented to us? Or is, or is she going to come out and literally tear it all apart and say, so it really so you just right. made this up because you were having a bad day and you thought Black History Month was the time that, you know. Right. You you went for so, shock value. Is she in private practice, like working for a firm or is she just by herself? Because that's one thing I, I hadn't seen of like, did they go hire her in her individual capacity or whatever her business is? Or is she, because it's like, were you at a firm and they hired the firm and the firm was like, this is going to be your case? I think or did she, she just go with a firm? I don't know. And that's the that's the part that I didn't think so, but I don't think she is. I mean, it's I'm sure the NFL like, didn't ask her her LSAT score. I'm sure they weren't tripping about it. They could, you know, she went to Harvard too. They're yeah. thinking, but even from an optic standpoint, oh. just hiring her creates that, like you said, the perception of wait a minute, was there legitimate business reasons as to why they have not been hiring? Or going back to the thread, the thing with Michael Harriet about the fact that most of the times it's the head coach is the coach and the GM are the ones that are making these decisions. So really NFL as the league is not as involved because, okay, you hire, we give you autonomy to hire your staff. So if you choose not to hire people of color women whatever that's on them that's not on us like I also wonder if they're going to try to draw that that line and, and remove you know distance themselves from the the fact that we're not the ones making the day-to-day -day decisions we are not hiring the coaches so we put and we put in this rule we said you have to hire you have to interview but I can't require them to hire people because they are their own separate entity right by the way, Loretta Lynch, my father, is a partner at Paul Weiss, Rifkin, Wharton, and Garrison. Oh, so she, okay. So basically, they didn't hire her firm. They just, did they just hire her or did they hire her firm? It sounds like they went to the firm. And then but she, we don't know if they went to the firm because she was there or like. But so either way, I would imagine that getting gooder and gooder. If she's a partner, <laughs> she, I, mean, you she I would imagine there. she has status enough to say she can choose her case. Yeah, to choose or turn down a case. And so, like, I would imagine you're not in a position where you're the lowest ranking, even as the junior part, you know, lowest ranking partner. I feel like you have enough credit cred whatever you want to call it to say no if you didn't agree with or believe in the case and so it's just like is it about a check or did you actually see something in this and maybe it's not maybe you disagree with the dis discrimination as a whole but what you because of course she's got access to things that we don't yet to see that in this specific case or situation there wasn't discrimination it was a person, you know, whatever the case may be, or they had already promised or been working with this other person to be hired as opposed to him. So it's so, so many layers. She's not the only person working the case from the firm. There's also mm -hmm. Brad Karp, who is a white man. And so, you know, like, because, you know, I love a good conspiracy theory. Um, <laughs> But this, I guess this isn't really a conspiracy theory, but it could be that the, that firm was chosen for whatever reason. And the white male is the, is basically, you know, the lead. And then because she is a black woman, 
exactly. you know, whether it is for her expertise or for the optics or whatever, that now they're doing the case together, you know. That's like what in the OJ case. I was Chris just about Darden. to say that's how Chris Darden ended up being there, and he should have said, "No, thank you. I'm going past on this one. Y'all can handle it. I'm gonna go." But, home. I mean, he didn't really have an option, did he? Not if he wanted to keep his job. Well, yes, his was. He was in less. I thought the way that they described it though was that the other guy, the guy that was originally there, had like some type of heart attack. And then they went to him to ask, hey, do you want this case? And he said- But it was probably a voluntold type of thing. Because he like, had he had the other one. He had, um, dude. Um, yeah, dude. Al okay. Collins. He had Al Collins' case. And then like they literally said, you know, <laughs> never mind. We're not going to do that but, one anymore. We're just going to bring it over. Man, there's but some cases. I mean, but he had less, I feel like he had, he was in less of a position to say no. He should have gone and home. And maintained his job security. <laughs> he should have gone home. Because I mean, yes, you know what happened to job security after that case? <laughs> Sometimes you don't need to say yes. He That's true. Him, you know, on but he friend. had no way. Like, listen, there is, listen. He knew. It, it, no matter, that case did not look like it was going to go the way it went. Like, yeah, okay. in his defense. But he, but it was bad. But his feeling about Mark Furman was actually correct when he actually had that first gut instinct. He should have yeah. said, "Church finger, I've got to go home. Like I got to go. I cannot stay here. I need to. <laughs> I need to exit out. Sorry, y'all. One minute here. I need to go because I'm not. I cannot do this to myself. As yeah. soon as you realize what you had in front of you." I, yeah, I understand. I mean, we saying. also are saying this with the benefit of you know we. We Monday we morning not. quarterback and no pun intended. Right. But, <laughs> really. But so, I mean, in real life, though, who thought that was going to go well? Like, I think they thought it was a pretty. Uh, what was her name? Marsha? Marsha Clark. Mar <laughs> Marsha Clark, yeah. She thought it was going to go well. Mm hmm. See, that's she that believed confidence. in her bones. See, that's that confidence. Mm -hmm. I know how that Sometimes goes. you might need to um, mm -hmm. evaluate this, weave it. To say, mm. I mean, it's but LA. When, it's down. When so you're it's situated, LA. when you're situated in certain standings, you lose. You know, you there's some vision that you, you just don't it. have. So you think that the light at the end of the tunnel was the tunnel actually ending and not the train? Exactly. You should have thought. Listen, when, when other this is downtown of LA. This right. is OJ Simpson. We clearly just had. Like Rodney, that whole thing happened. Take that into, I'm pretty sure they did not take that into consideration. That would have been one of the, see, again, different socialization. First thing exactly. I thought, they just took an L. They're not you about also, to give me this W. But that's also why OJ Sim, OJ's team brought in Johnny Cochran because he wasn't a part of it initially. No. It was, they realized, hold up. We need to, we got, we can't, we can't do this just on the facts. We can't do this just on the facts. Cause if we rely just on the facts, <laughs> we might not, we might not come out of this with a W. So right. We now that's the case up. that was flimsy. <laughs> I mean, and, and they, they, and they did nothing they, to help themselves. So again, I'm not saying that, you know, it, the case I'm just saying that in real life, <laughs> you should have thought about that. Like there should have been some evaluation of real life here and say, listen, y'all, I don't think we're going to get this. And this is a bad, bad idea. But at the same time, there sometimes once you dug your heels in that you just stuck. Yeah. So and I mean, they were stuck. I mean, they were definitely was, stuck. I'm pretty sure pride started like of hold up. We're here. No, we've got to. And the fact that they knew from like the facts and the evidence, hold or like thereof, we, or contaminated thereof. I mean, we could go right. Because I was say there was actually a good amount of evidence. evidence. It was, was just like, not was properly collected. <laughs> so if they looking at it from a, initially assessing it, hold up, we have we have a very strong case here. Now, okay, clearly, they did, either they just didn't know how to, or they were bamboozled by their own witnesses, and <laughs> it really it, though, 
it just it it got <laughs> Mark yo, Furman bamboozled you. Mark Furman bamboozled. I don't know. I don't know. I'm <laughs> trying here, but I know when I took trial hard. practice. Because I mean, because not only did he have his comments for his book or screenplay or whatever that was, wasn't he also the one that made comments about the judge's wife as well? Like there was an issue with about her. Was that I him? Do vaguely remember so that. Like yeah. he did that, it was, and then it was problematic all around. Yeah. And then even to Chris did Darden, they have like, a judge that had to like, step let's say Chris or Darden Chris didn't Trump. know like the L for OJ, right? But then he popped up. What was that in 2019? He was because he was going to defend the person who was accused of killing Nipsey. Like, sir, do you <laughs> want to win a case? Like, do you care? <laughs> about the case? No, Does, no. Matter, no. <laughs> Before I even really knew all the details, I remember when I took trial practice, when we were trying to, um, we were learning oral, uh, like opening and closing statements. My professor played a part of Chris Darden's opening, baby justice in a building that's on fire. Really? That was a part of like baby justice. You only got to watch my cousin Vinny. <laughs> No, he oh, played as I mean, if you need a whole class, you can watch like Legally Blonde and just like call it a day. That's what we should have did. No, so one. Oh, so I, I love a, a good uh, distraction and diversion. So one <laughs> of the best things that I think the other school I went to did when I left was they did a was it a I think they did a crim pro class based on the wire. Oh, I was like, oh, oh I would take that. Today. That sounds like see, and I have to watch. I rewatch the whole series every single year because I have to. Listen, I would have booked that class. <laughs> I heard in that courthouse. Oh my goodness! Yes, Love I would have. I would have. I would take that class today. Exactly. But, yeah, but like I said, just from listening to that, and at that point, I didn't even know all the. I hadn't actually like looked into the trial, but I was like, okay, just off the little bit you done told us what we supposed to do and how this supposed to work. He, he, uh, and maybe that was the closing, but either way, it was just like, sir, <laughs> that's, that's what you came up with. Not the manual of not to do. Exactly. And again, <laughs> and that was times when what? your employer comes to you and knocks on the door, you say, keep knocking. Cause I, I'm not touching yeah, that. But there's a lot of people that don't have the, I'll say the gumption to do that. Most people are going to do whatever it is their boss comes and asks them to do. I mean, I've been guilty of that at times. And then, <laughs> well, I did it once and then I didn't do it again. And then I did it <laughs> But um, <laughs> I learned quickly. <laughs> but mm, but no, like I said, when I heard that, it was just like, yeah, you y'all were living in a different world and but not it was a different world for real right not the old college yeah not <laughs> him but i'm saying like marcia and 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 chris were i don't know where they were living or what they how they were viewing things well based on the uh <laughs> the little documentaries that they made on tv <laughs> <laughs> and that's what i'm basing a lot of this on. i know but okay. that's the whole thing though they were they mean they must not have been living in the same okay. la as everybody else well but they want i don't i never got the impression that they were on the same page they yeah was, I didn't, that she, was true. it exactly. seemed like she, she, had an she got personally invested and took off with it and then she was dragging him along yeah well i mean like i said he was he, he was, had his concerns about Furman. He said mm -hmm. early on, we should not use him. I've seen cops like him, like, this is not the way to go about it. So Talk I, mean, about I think he was fully uh, aware uh, of how bad this was going to go. It was just a right. matter of, you know, what they understood. And, a, and like, even, oh. with, and even with, with that jury, like, I don't know how, because I mean, even if you factor, like if you remove, you know, Rodney King, you have Latasha Harlings right before that. So then you have a whole series of just bad things happening. And now you're literally asking people to say they're going to convict this man 
not just a man who is now oh, no, and that's the no thing, who is like, now black who is now who's now a newly found black man that we just acquired because you know he said before he was oj so he wasn't he didn't see race and that didn't matter to him. Feel but like, today or those days he figured out that it did matter and he needed to play upon that that's another topic for a whole different day but i just but, still think you're discounting that he was still oj like even with the black community like that's like and, and me and we came out hard and the black community came came out hard for him they were there every day and that is but that is what you know essentially is going to happen every single time we're going to and that's what that we do. And we're going to say no you shouldn't go to jail we're going to say you should have known better but we're here now yeah like the thing and this is completely unrelated to sports or anything else like that but the guy who was just murdered like girl, girl, I get out of my head. <laughs> oh, that, I was about to say that we we were about to see who if 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 the delegation is gonna show up. We truly about to see who bout it and who bout it bout it. Like, come on. The way it's looking, nobody's showing up for that. Listen, everybody's mm-hmm. like, we can just pass. Like, mm, gotta go, y'all. Because mm-hmm. no, be like, oh, did you hear that cotton ball hit the floor? It was loud. <laughs> like and his family is going really hard like come and support and i'm like and people are like listen had he made the comments at 17 but had changed his life by 27 they might have cared a little bit more but he was still living what he said at, at 17 so they're like it's hard to mm-hmm. yeah they, he, i don't I mean, he, thought, he thought he was safe and he was not safe that mm-hmm. didn't end well that is so well you know some people don't believe fat me greasy <laughs> They don't. And like that, mom would say he was clearly from Missouri. I mean, <laughs> I mean but that is OJ got is, is a complex. It is a very real thing. Mm-hmm. And OJ, and yeah, and I get it. Like OJ, I just don't think they thought that through. I think that they really miscalculated the frustration and disdain that was going on at that time. And again, how old were we like? five so I mean all I know is that my grandfather watched the trial the entire time and I was like why do we keep watching CNN it's just boring I'm so over it but now I was sitting here and watch it all day anyway like I give me more we were living in Turkey and I promise you that is one of the few things if ever that I remember coming in so clearly in English (laughs) and all of the I didn't know who OJ was like my introduction to OJ was that trial yeah but like and all of the adults everywhere you could where you went that there was t- there was a tv that had access to american channels it was on and it was literally like you said it was almost like it was an event everybody was watching the trial and it's like yo what is it was a collect it was a collective event that everyone had to see it because i mean in real life we will probably never see anything like that again in our life. Hopefully, I mean, we barely saw it the first time because we were little. But I, hope. I highly doubt we'll ever see anything like like that trial ever again. Yeah, and I'm a we little bit some- older because I was in high school. But I will say the day that the uh, verdict came out, I'll just say I, I was not at school all day that day. But when I went back, <laughs> <laughs> when it I did go to, school, to participate in my extracurriculars. Um, I remember very distinctly, I found out like that word had spread because the first thing I saw when when I walked in was this dude ran up on me with a pack of Starburst and was like, the juice is loose. (laughs) (laughs) See, and I like, I don't remember that day. I, I mean, I've clearly watched it since then, but yeah. I mean, I feel like people were kind of just like, mm, okay. And, and I think the documentary, the 30 for 30 or the, <clears throat> um, got it so clear. It's like, there was clearly a hard and fast line of like, who felt what way about it. Mm-hmm. And it, and it was just one of those things where like, you know, a- any other day that would have been a straight guilty, like guilty times 10. And that's, that's why Marsha and Chris thought they was good. Yeah. Exactly. They thought but, they they, were- but the but but they underestimated the fact that money is still money. 
and money will still buy you a legal team that will get the job done if need be. And I think that that was underestimated severely because he had enough money to pay for the best. And they clearly yeah. did not do a culture check or temperature check of I don't what was know. going on where they were. And, or even at, to my thing is, okay, we thought we was good going in, but at some point midway, hold up. I, the time has changed. I still think, especially at that time, you might have a little more room now, but especially at that time, I don't think anybody thought that there was a real chance of him getting off. You, we talking about, no matter how you thought you identified or what people saw you at, you're talking about a black man killing a white woman. True. I don't think anybody and thought, a white man. Don't, don't, don't forget the man. Well, well, and that's true. And you're yeah, absolutely double down. Right. Like he doubled and down. Because I'm usually the person that that's bringing that up because nobody talks <laughs> about him. Oh no. I mean, I mean, no, no, no. He definitely doubled down. He did mm-hmm. something that in history is very right Unheard and of. and to that to the point though i think the point why people don't talk about that because that's typically the context in which this is <laughs> he's discarded is mm-hmm. we talking about a black man killing a white woman you you talking about the <clears throat> the pedestal of our society has been killed and whether it's true or not we done said and we we got enough of an inkling to say it is this black man the in essence the we getting real down dirty and deep into the bottom of the totem pole yeah. that you know even today that matters you know and and so, even back and, and in history you know being killed for less was mm-hmm. like ele- and because you just said like Emmett Till like allegedly mm-hmm. whistling at a person whistling right. I didn't touch you I was far away from you when it occurred nothing mm-hmm. happened or I like I looked at you the wrong way so I mean for that to even happen and then for him to get there I mean of course they would have thought that would have been a guilty right off the bat but I think there were just there were too many factors for that to for that to be at that time and I think it was there I don't want to call it ignorance but social unawareness that just made it to the point of they were not factoring in the temperature of LA at that time or just <clears throat> I don't think any I don't think the courts ever or any member of the bar or anything ever had to worry I think that was probably the turning point for having to be concerned about so what's, what's going on socially what's yeah, going on sure. right outside the windows of the courtroom because again you are talking about a black man accused of killing a white woman that's an open and shut case but like, he also didn't have a white jury though so because so in preparing right. for the class that I'm working on in looking at a lot of it a lot of those cases where you actually had and I'll call them cases loosely because that would imply that they were actually done in a proper manner right before. right <laughs> um you know the jury was such a huge component mm-hmm. and maybe had he had a bench trial the result would have been different not right. not maybe not well, me. probably would have been a little bit different. I'm going to say that. But I think that when you know, so you have to factor that in too. I mean, he was a Black man who also had a jury that was diverse. Right. So that's a different, they're bringing in a whole different perspective to the table when they're evaluating this. Mm-hmm. And so I think that that plays in too, because well, a lot of those cases were cases where you did not have a diverse jury at all. Or they would, or even if you were in like an urban environment, you would go federal for some charges and then you get a whole different jury panel anyway. So mm-hmm. I think that also, so the social time and all of the stuff that was going on around that, and then all of the, um, and the jury selection or the lack thereof for the prosecution essentially right. dictated how that case turned out. Yeah. <clears throat> Which, like you said, that was a turning point because now it's for almost every high profile case, there is a social media strategy that goes with the case. Case in point, B. Flores, <laughs> his team was out there on the news that day. So we had a social media or a publicity plan for this case in addition to whatever their legal strategy is because you almost have to now 
Because mm-hmm. if you don't, you're going to lose. You might end up with people. Well, yeah, that. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> you're likely, because outside of that, the average person does not pay attention to what's going on in the court. And most people avoid jury duty like it's the plague. Man. I just got my notice today. And I said, man, I said, I said, you're not even going to pick me. So why are you making me come back? Right. Right. They're not going to pick me. I don't think they would pick me if I wanted to. Like, I kind of want to. I want That's to. Good. Like, I would I, love I to. Like, you to. give me a good criminal case that I don't, I can law and order it and I don't have to think. I mean, correction. I would have to <laughs> think as a juror, but I would not have to think as an attorney. Which is a lot Ooh, less stressful than someone about when to object or not object. I can like, just, I, but I'm not objecting, not knowing what the rule is that I'm objecting. Just that didn't sound right. right. Like didn't sound right. I would just for you, you'd have to make sure you have your notepad close so that you. I'm know. not worried about where are my witnesses. I'm not worried about is my client going to show up to court today or not. And I'm are not, they going to answer these questions the way they're supposed to answer the questions, or are they going to start curveballs? Absolutely like, not. Absolutely not. Who does that? Exactly. exactly. So I mean, again, like I would, I would love to sit back and have my little law and order moment and watch a nice little trial that I'm not having to actively engage in the lawyering side of. But oh, the that see that sounds good, but I'm self aware <laughs> enough to know that you <laughs> go down a rabbit hole anyway. Exactly. So when we when we get down and dirty into it trying to come up with a verdict that's mm-hmm. when i'm gonna be problematic i already know and i can see that that's why they don't want us on jury yeah. because yeah. Well, it's like when you were talking about with your class earlier it was not a legal class but they were asking about legal things so it's like i could go down this rabbit hole and give you this real thorough analysis but hold up that's not needed right here so right. That's even like my cousin was just telling us <laughs> about when she had jury duty. It was the whole thing is hilarious because she tells <laughs> stories in such a great way. Um, so she tried to get out of it. So she told them, you know, she was like, my cousin, a lawyer and my daughter about to be a lawyer. Shout out to my little cousin about to graduate from Georgetown Law. Um, but yeah, so she <laughs> so she all of this. She just knew she wasn't going to be chosen. She was chosen. And then was the foreman. I was like, how did you get to be the foreman? <laughs> See, but I didn't want to go. I want them to select me, kind of, but I don't think that they're going to. I think they're going to just send me home. So I'm like, I'm like, if you're going to send me home, why even make me come for the day? Like, just let me not right. bother because you're not going to pick me. Listen, My mom tried to go home. home by saying that her daughter was a lawyer but they didn't ask her the question <laughs> she was what? like she was, she was she it up like i they can't be on the jury why my daughter because oh, okay. i guess they asked somebody else like what does your children do and so she was ready and she was like i was ready and then she didn't ask it. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> but then after the fact she was all excited about it like they do this and then i was like i'm 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 aware I'm aware, right? Well, and that was even the thing when my cousin was talking about. So first of all, when she told us how they ended up deciding and everything, I was like, yeah, no, nah, that's not what I would have done. But then that sparked the whole, you know, conversation amongst the family and people started explaining and stuff. And I'm like, I'm aware. Like, I'm, aware. I'm the only person at this table that went to law school. I'm aware. Right. Like, just because I don't do it. <laughs> Right. I, know exactly I don't do it on a day to day. I know how the process works. I know what enough. And it's like, and these are the reasons why I don't do it. Exactly. But it was, it was like, it was interesting to hear like her, because it was really like she almost like she got a, a peek into a, di- you know, into a different world. Mm-hmm. And just her like first it was the frustration because they had to stay and she wanted to talk about it so bad and I, like I'm getting off the phone you can't talk about this I don't want you to I don't want to we're not causing problems so no but then after it was done and she was just like yeah and they do this and then this and this and I was like mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm aware uh-huh. yeah but okay for real because we really could be on here forever. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I, I want to give you all you all's nights back. 
Um, but I got all types of ad libs I want to throw on this thing. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I mean, if you want to keep going, we can keep going. We just make this a couple episodes. I'd already know this is going to have to be at least two parts. Yeah, um, I was thinking that too. Yeah. I don't want to subject the people. I don't know that listeners will keep going. I have not gotten to that level of. They won't. They that won't. they'll keep watching and listening for this long. So it's definitely going to be broken up. Yeah, I'm sure some people are going to be like, oh, this is boring anyway. So, you know, just because well, of the. Know. Just because of the topic. legal approach, yeah, the legal but, approach to the topic that probably doesn't interest some people anyway, so. But I don't know because, or, and maybe this could be my hope again. I feel like although we're talking about it from a legal standpoint, we're not talking about it in a way that I think most people think about the legal approach or like, because none of us are, and I take pride in saying this, none of us are your typical lawyer we know our stuff and we know how to do, you know, if push come to shove and we had to be in court or we had to do these things, we are all very much capable of doing it and have done so, but we very much bring our whole selves to what we do. And we are aware, and it's been said a couple of times, like we look at the world through our, in our lens. We are black women. Uh, we have all been, trained from a legal standpoint in a I would say HBCU a unique from a unique perspective as well so all of that comes you you get all of that with us so the way that we talk about this although I think we've had way more like legal legal conversations tonight than I think we've had in a very long time but still, I think, the, I, and like I said, it might be my hope that the way that we're talking about this is not the way that people would anticipate it. And I feel like we are fairly entertaining. At least I find this entertaining. I'm not. I'm mm. boring. So I know. Oh, my I'm goodness. Not we're not. Else. No, what we're not going to do. <laughs> I am boring. Not, I will not. Oh, yeah, I forgot. That. I can't use that word with you. <laughs> I will not entertain that with you. Um, <laughs> okay. That is a whole other topic. Uh, I, don't, I don't know how I let that slip my mind. Mm, okay. <laughs> Anywho. <laughs> um, <laughs> if you all would like those listening or watching, um, to to follow you i know both of you all are fairly active on twitter um if you would like please share no okay so no we'll not, just, i'm not at, like i'm saying i'm not active i just watch stuff i watch exactly. people i'm, I'm active, a people exactly. watcher like bird watching i am a people watcher i'm, I'm actively like lurking i was gonna say me y'all are both like i'm on there but even just trying to keep up i get lost so um, i just I stay on there like, Elizabeth will send, like both of y'all will send me stuff. And so I just wait. Mm-hmm, okay. Thanks. I have enough people. You need are... something to do during the work day. <laughs> right. <laughs> I really just started getting back on Twitter. I had all but forgotten Twitter. Um, and then I was like, let me go see what they're doing over there. And it's a, a whole new world. I'm yeah, like, I just it's like I forget. I saw somebody post it's like, how do you get to black Twitter? <laughs> <laughs> and it was like it was like I feel like this is a dumb question but also how like how do I get to it and it's but it's yeah. like you really think you get there I, and you like, how do I get out exactly <laughs> well I have <laughs> that's a thing this too much like that is totally a thing it is I just okay. found myself in it I went I I, I had the best path of going down the wrong path as far as <laughs> how I jump how I cannonballed myself in the black twitter and don't get me wrong it is very riveting <laughs> <laughs> however you get to them times you'd be like all right like okay mm-mm. how do I get here yes this is it like mm-mm. let me it's out cool. yeah but then okay. you do go back and look you go back you know like what y'all doing here <laughs> maybe maybe just a little maybe five more minutes right and uh, then three hours later it's right yeah when you're supposed to be asleep 
that part. Well, okay, so I guess they're they're active Twitter watchers or lurkers. So hopefully they will both come back um, at some point so that you all can hear from them more. But it's been said multiple times in multiple ways. Although it is feels like it is at the pace of a tortoise and maybe a baby tortoise, we're making some progress and things do get better. So whatever you are, whatever your thing is right now, whatever you're dealing with, even if it is in your job and you feel like you got some d- discrimination, microaggressions, whatever it may be that you can't quite put your finger on, um, or you're trying to decide if you want to be the first person to say something, um, just think about it. I think we've talked about a lot of different things, but in everything, regardless of what it looks like or feels like, remember that this is all a part of a journey. And as much as we don't like it half the time, it's a process. And in the end, it is all going to work itself out and it will be for your good, even though it might not look like it or feel like it in the process, you will appreciate it once you get to the other side of it. So Africa, Elizabeth, thank you all both for uh, for being guests and for putting a smile on my face today. Also sharing uh, your, your, your thoughts, your opinions. Thank you all for listening. If you are not already, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, whether it be on YouTube um, or if you're listening on any uh, platform that you get your podcast. So thank you all for being here. Thank you all for listening. And until next time.